Mountain School, Teacher Sarah again. I'm saying hello from the Skyline Trail up along Skyline Boulevard, just above Mountain School. It's such a beautiful place to hike, full of old Douglas fir trees, beautiful rock boulders covered with moss. You know, on the hikes that we've taken at school, we, used, we would find acorns that fell to the ground from oak trees. And I wanted to share with you a story that the Ohlone people thousands of years ago who walked all of this area told their children. Their children were always asking questions and wondering why this and why that. So a long time ago, the Ohlone's used to make up stories to explain things to their children and to themselves. So I wanted to talk to you about Douglas fir trees. And here is a giant fir reaching so high into the sky. How do they stand up? How can something so tall Stand up. Well, look what's under the ground. This is the root system for a Douglas fir, an ancient fir in an ancient forest. And so many little animals live down among the roots. It's just that the roots serve as the tree's legs and feet. And that's how they hold on to grow so tall. So the story goes that one time, thousands of years ago, everything could talk. The trees could talk, the birds could talk, rocks, sticks, mice, all the animals could talk. One night, a Douglas fir could hear some little scritch scratch scritch scratch on the bark of its tree right here and the fur woke up it was in the middle of the night and he saw little mice he saw mice climbing up the trunk going out on the branches and chewing all of the little seeds out of the fur's cones the douglas fur got very upset he said little mice you you can't eat my seeds. Please don't eat my seeds or I won't be able to make any baby fir trees. And they went tee hee 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 tee like that. And they ran off. They kind of laughed and snickered and they ran back down the trunk of the tree and back into their little burrows under the ground. Well, the Douglas fir tree was so upset. He talked to the great spirit. And the great, he said to the spirit, those little mice, great spirit, they ate all of my seeds. It would be okay if they ate just a few seeds, but they ate all of my seeds out of my fur cones. What can we do? Well, the great spirit said, I have an idea. I will talk to them. I will talk to them and tell them that they can have a few of your seeds, but not all of them, or you won't be able to make any baby fir trees. So the great spirit talked to the little mice, and the mice agreed to leave plenty of seeds so they could grow into baby fir trees. Well, the next night, the Douglas fir tree woke up again, and he could hear the scritch scratch of a trail of mice going way up the trunk, out onto the branches, out into the little tiny fir cones. And they were going, <laughs> and they were eating, they were munching all the seeds once again. And the Douglas fir tree called to the great spirit and he said, they're doing it again, great spirit, what shall we do? And the great spirit had an idea. This time he was going to follow through. He made the little fur cones and the little scales on the cones clamp right down over those little mice. 
and they got caught. They got caught right in the fir cones. I wonder if I could find some at the base of this tree. And those mice were trapped in the scales of the cones forever. And here you can see, right here you can see the little mouse legs and the long tail sticking out down below. And that was the explanation for the mouse tails in the Douglas fir cones.